Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today we have to talk about bipolar capacitors in the Amiga's audio circuitry. So in my Amiga 2000 distorted audio repair video that I did recently, I talked a bit about the audio circuitry that is actually virtually the same in all Amigas. Uh, so this is our audio circuitry. Um, these are the stereo RCA outputs, audio outs. There's a little um, op amp that amplifies the signal coming from Paula, which is over here, uh, which is the audio chip. And there's our decoupling capacitors, which are, uh, this has been recapped, but they are stock, they are polarized 22 microfarad capacitors that are just um, decoupling the output. And uh, I was assuming, and many other people are assuming still, that this is actually poorly designed. And uh, you would have, in order to make this work perfectly, you would have to use bipolar capacitors, like uh, these Nichicon Muse capacitors. They are not the, the right uh, capacitance, I believe. But uh, yeah, many people just insert these instead of polarized, normal, regular capacitors in there. And the reason why people think they should use bipolar capacitors basically is because um, an audio wave is like an electrical wave. I'm just going to try to draw a sine wave that looks something like this. There's our zero crossing and there's our positive uh, and our negative. And that's actually, that's an AC voltage. Uh, Capacitors only let through DC voltage usually like so or like so, depending on how they are polarized. Bipolar capacitors would let both pass. So this would be ideal for decoupling a signal like this. Yeah, that's why I believe or believed that bipolar caps would be in order in this position. Then some people started commenting on my uh, audio repair video and pointed out that this is actually a circuit that is correctly designed because they are actually giving this a little bias so that the wave will all be on the positive side. Uh, this should be like 2.5 volts or something like that, a bias that's just added to the wave. And that would make possible that you can just use a, a normal, regular polarized capacitor for this. <laughs> we're going to find out today if this is true. So in order to do this, we're going to break out the oscilloscope and measure the signal coming from the polar chip. Uh, to the decoupling capacitors here and to the outputs as well. So let's let's have a look at the signal. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank my sponsor PCBWay who made themselves a good name in the retro community already by offering quality PCB manufacturing. At the moment they are offering uh, populating boards even starting at $30 for 20 boards. So I'm setting this to DC, 2 volts should be plenty. Let's see, let's have a look at the, the output without any, any audio on it. Let's just turn on the Amiga and see what it does. Okay, I'm just connecting the uh, ground lead to the uh, shield, which is ground on the Amiga 500. And then I'm just probing the positive side of the capacitors. There's one for each channel. And if uh, the assumption is correct that these are biased, there should be a positive voltage on there, positive DC bias of 2.5 volts or so thereabouts. Let's have a look. And there we are. As this is set to 2 volts, uh, you can see that this is clearly, this is like a 2.5 
volts positive bias. <laughs> so the rumors or the myth that you need bipolar capacitors in the audio circuitry of an Amiga is just plain wrong because they are compensating for that by biasing the audio signal before it uh, goes through the capacitors. So it can pass without any any uh, harm done to the signal, obviously. And they can use uh, inexpensive regular polarized capacitors. The bipolar ones are a lot more expensive. So I'm stepping this up a little bit because I find this quite interesting. I have connected a uh, disk drive and uh, my spare keyboard and uh, we're going to run a test disk. And I have permanently hooked up the um, scope probe there so we can see the voltage. Let's see. Audio. Ah, and as you can see, and also hooked up the, the uh, speakers there, so you can hear what this is doing. This is the 500 hertz sine wave. And as you can see, it's all in the clear. Uh, the zero, the ground, this is the ground, it's not quite adjusted correctly. So this is our ground, this has a function to just show display the ground, so you can adjust for that. Um, this is our sine wave that's actually coming out of the Amiga. Uh, yeah, so this is what what the capacitors see. Uh, <laughs> 500 hertz sine wave looks pretty stable to me. It's pretty nice. I can just test the other channel. We can switch on both. Uh, I think I'm probing the the left channel now. Yeah, that's the left channel. And as you can see, there's a little overshoot into the negative actually if you have both channels. That's interesting. So that would it would probably make sense in some cases it would probably make audio a tiny bit better if you had bipolar caps in there. That's interesting. That's like a half a volt not even half a volt, I guess, of overshoot there. Huh. Okay. So I think both ways are correct in a way. So you have you have like the 2.5 volts bias, and you're not going to see uh, like this kind of sine wave often. This is like full amplitude. Uh, both left channels that the Amiga has playing a sine wave at full uh, full volume, basically. You're not going to see this in reality or in, in regular music on the Amiga often. So, and that's only a tiny bit of overshoot there. So, this might get uh, cut a bit, but it's, go it's not gonna be audible at all. And all the Amigas come with uh, polarized capacitors stock, so that's, yeah, it works fine and the audio quality is great. And if you use uh, good quality polarized caps, you're gonna be, it's gonna be great. So what's my verdict on this? Is the myth of using bipolar capacitors debunked completely? Uh, nearly completely debunked, I'd say. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have bipolar capacitors in there, but it's not necessary at all, I guess. So, yeah. So much for now. Hope you found this informative. Just a quick one, because I was really curious about this after people pointed it out to me. And apparently they were right. Not quite fully right, but they were right. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. I'm Jan Beta. See you next time. Bye.